No intro. When you look at Leighton Van Der Esch, you can really tell the lessons that Rod Marinelli's taught him. Anybody that watched film on Van Der Esch when he was at Boise State, you I mean, he clearly had a problem dealing with blockers. But who better than to teach someone how to deal with blockers than Paul Paul Rod Marinelli? Let's run this. We got Leighton Van Der Esch right here. Let's just run the play, take a look at what we got. Then we'll bring it back and we'll talk about it for a little bit. <clears throat> Dealing with blocks, right? And this is one of those one of those Sean Lee moves too, so we can give him credit um, for coaching as well, because this is it's a move Sean been been using for years. If you get to your landmark first, you ain't got to worry about the blockers, man. Also, um, with Leighton Van Der Esch playing playing this position, the D lineman really help him kind of break free, kind of sort of. So look at your man's right here. It's uh, Malik Collins here, I believe so. We, we, we see number 71 kind of get caught up with Malik there, right? And just that small little penetration, just that small little bit of occupying 96 here, that lets, that lets Van Der Esch kind of beat 71 to his spot. You know, 71 kind of gets slowed down in that spot there, right? Van Der Esch gets to his landmark, which is here, okay? 71's behind him. You can't block him in the back. All young Van Der Esch has to do now is find the football and make the tackle. See, you know, these these slips, these, uh, you know, getting getting to your landmark, using your athleticism, being smarter. That's the uh, those are the uh, type of keys that will help Van Der Esch stay free out here. And we see it worked here. Let's keep watching. Now, I don't care what none of y'all say to me. Let's watch it from this angle first. I don't care what none of y'all say to me. Layden Van Der Esch, when he did engage blockers, because it's going to happen at some point, when he did engage blockers, he never used that long frame of his to get guys off of him, right? He takes coaching really, really well. Paul Paul Rod Marinelli, kids, you got long arms. Use them. Keep these guys off of you. Use your length. You ain't got to be the strongest in the world. But if I stick my arm out and I stop you from getting to me because my arms are longer than yours, because Van Der Esch is gifted in that way, use them. Use them. Find the bar carrier, get off, and make the tackle. Now let's watch it from the cartel view. It just looked better on that first view. But, man, use your length. That's coaching there. Shouts out to young Van Der Esch for taking coaching and learning stuff, man. Wait till you get bigger and stronger, though. That'll be fun to watch. And another way young Layden gets free is that he understands angles. You know, he he understands that he's at the second level. And for these offensive linemen to be able to get to us, you got to understand angles. You know, they're not faster than us, us being linebackers. You know, me and Jalen, I'm speaking as I'm Van Der Esch, right? Um, if, you know, offensive linemen aren't going to be faster than us, so we kind of got to understand angles. I want everybody to look at Jalen Smith here, right? Jalen Smith kind of became a victim of the angle, right? He kind of he, he he ran right into this little choo-choo train motion that 73 went into. Didn't have to deviate or nothing. Now, Jalen Smith is kind of bigger and stronger than Van Der Esch at this point. And he's kind of a gangster, so he likes to fight these blocks here. But um, let's take a look at uh at uh 51. Let's take a look at the center. Watch him pull out in space, watch his track, and watch him try to get to Van Der Esch, but Van Der Esch cut the angle off. See what I mean? Now, if Van Der Esch would have continued to work to 51's left shoulder, 51 would have got a solid block here. Ball carrier would just go uh, between 51 and 73. It would have been blocked perfect. At this point, it's blocked perfectly, right? But the angle, <laughs> the angle, we see 51 going there. Van Der Esch is just going to simply, simply slip behind it, opposed to getting blocked there. And he's there for the tackle. See what I mean? D-Law even got him some. Let's watch it one more time before we move on. Easy peasy, Lemon Squeezy. Great stuff. This ain't even... <laughs> look, being in the right place at the right time here, this is Van Der Esch's interception. Um, but, I mean, there's still something to say about being in the right place when it's time to be there, right? Um, we're going to get a little bit of play action here. Van Der Esch is going to come down a bit, but he's going to drop right back in the spot. Cool. And when the ball bounces off young Calvin Ridley's hands, Van Der Esch is right there. Let's look at the run, though. Let's look at the run. Let's look at the run. Mm. Run that dude over. Look at that boy. Um, my man's um Xavier Woods. <laughs> This almost didn't matter here, but how he did my man's Calvin really, but luckily it was just in the frame enough. What the hell is going on here? Wait a minute. Who is this celebrating here? What are you doing? Who is this guy celebrating? 
That's the guy that we activated. Okay, cool. Uh, cartel view. Let's watch in the cartel view. Let's see what's going on here. Banderish get back. Yep. Hey man, ball awareness. Ball awareness. I know we don't really use the ET word here anymore, but man, next year <laughs> we add Earl Thomas to this thing. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. And here's another example of um Van Der Esch cutting off the angle here, the whole train track notion, right? Watch number 63 right here. Watch the uh the right guard. Watch his angle that he takes to get the second level and watch Van Der Esch just like not have it. Mm -mm. <laughs> Hey, if you go back and look at 63, 63 kind of gets shook up at the uh at the miss. Like everybody, just watch 63 and nobody else. Watch just just watch 63. Angle, angle, angle. Whoa! <laughs> you see him put his arms out trying to catch his balance right here. Oh YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Vach Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Wolski. Salute. And young Van Der Esch here. Let's uh, let's watch this close first. Let's watch it close. And the reason <clears throat> I want to show to y'all close first, I want y'all to look at Van Der Esch's eyes here. Look at his eyes. His eyes are gonna constantly stay on Matt Ryan. Just look at how comfortable he is in pass coverage here, right? This is really for his eyes. Just look at his eyes. Look at Van Der Esch's eyes right there. They're gonna stay on on on, on Matt, but he's gonna keep that hand on eighty one. Just to kind of, you know, know where he's at. Just to kind of get the feel for him, right? But if Matt Ryan comes back around, he looks at Van Der Esch, That's when Van Der Esch bites on it. Now, let's get the better look. I just wanted to get the zoom, uh, zoomed in view so we can look at Van Der Esch's eyes. Now, look at Vandy's eyes. Let me move it over one time. Now, let's look at Vandy's eyes as they zoom in on Matt Ryan. Staying on Matt Ryan. Now, when Matt Ryan looks at Van Der Esch, that's when he... <clears throat> plants that foot and he goes <clears throat> get that out of here damn 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 carl lewis hey man another successful outing from young Leighton van der Esch is very exciting it's very exciting he's um have he, he's in pro bowl talks now he's definitely in defensive rookie of the year talks now it's very impressive um I think a lot of his success comes from where he plays. Nothing fits him better than the Will linebacker spot. Um, you know, it all goes back to our criticisms of him in college. You know, will he be able to deal with the inside, deal with the blockers and traffic and trash and things like that? Well, smart move by the coaching staff. People don't really like to give our coaching staff credit. Move him to Will linebacker where he deals with less trash and traffic and blockers and things, right? So he's basically playing Sean Lee's spot. Um, a lot of Cowboys fans are trying to ask me, so what do we do with Sean Lee? Do we get rid of Sean Lee at this point? Um, do we try to, what kind of trade value can we get? And I think that's uh, that's a silly statement. You know, it's not like Sean Lee is a uh, is a character problem. It's not like Sean Lee can't play. It's not like Sean Lee's a washed up old man that we, that we refuse to move away from. Sean Lee is a very valuable asset. Um, so let's continue to play Sean Lee. Let's continue to play Van Der Esch. If Van Der Esch gets hurt, then, you know, yeah, we're going to be looking at each other, right? But let Van Der Esch and Sean Lee, Jalen Smith, and Joe Thomas, let those guys rotate. Damian Wilson is the all-time Sam linebacker at this point. Um, I saw uh, some some people ask, um, why don't we put, uh, you know, somebody at Sam linebacker? Is Damian Wilson that good? Well, it's a totally different position, totally different things that we ask for. Um, and Jalen's just perfect at the mic spot, so we're going to leave him there. And, um, hey, man, we ain't got to get rid of nobody. Let's just continue to rotate. I tell you what, when the playoffs come around, you'll be glad to have Sean Lee, you know, versus one of these hype, high-powered high offenses, you know, in, you know, just in case we run into the Saints in the playoffs or the Rams in the playoffs, something like that. You would love to have high IQ Sean Lee and having him staying fresh, rotating with, with uh, Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith and all those guys. But anyway... 
Hey man, go in the comment section. Tell me what what should we do moving forward with Young Van Der Esch. I ain't trying to hear y'all talk about trading or nothing. We ain't trying to talk about trading Sean Lee or anything like that. Um, but let me know. Hey man, leave a like on this video. The more likes I get in the first couple of hours, the better the traffic gets. Um, we got some pretty good evidence of that on the last few videos. So y'all check me out on that. Uh, follow me on Twitter, V O C H L O N B A R D I. The Patreon is more important than food and water. The PayPal is more important than food and water. I got a Discord. I got all those links in the description. I sell shirts. Check that link out in the description. Vach's Voice Podcast, all your podcast streaming platforms. That link might be somewhere in the description. I don't know. Just search it out. It's on whatever you listen to podcasts on. Search Vach Lombardi or Vach's Voice. It will be there. Also, go to Cowboys Experience on Facebook. Facebook and CowboysExperience.com. Um, come out to one of their events. Come come meet Michael Gallup. Um, come meet Cole Beasley. We got Rob Smith in there this week. Vach Lombardi, Law Nation, all the other Cowboys YouTubers are going to try to make it to Lava Cantina in the um, Dallas area, the colony. So, uh, hey, man, check all that out. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski. The Peaceky Whiskey's implied at this point. All right? Peace.